we're gonna grab this one and we are installing the slim i believe they call that a slim that's a six inch There you go, guys. We're wrapping up gel coat on this boat. You can see that on the previous episode if you're interested, but we are just about to do the rub rail install. So what we were showing you guys is the taco metals. We're going with the uh, inch and seven eighths tall by inch and a 16th wide. That is the kit that we're using. It's a 70 foot kit. This boat's gonna take about 64, 65 feet or so. And uh, we went ahead and bought a bunch of fasteners. We're using number 10. 24 stainless steel screws with lock nuts on them and it's really going to bring this boat around right now we just got a lot of gray going on but this boat is kind of unique we've got a rolled rolled gunnel on this thing got a big channel here so we're just going to be through bolting we will not be screwing it'll be through bolting and uh we've laid a piece of drop cloth here on the floor because as you're unrolling that rub rail you don't want to be dragging on the concrete it'll scuff it up and ding it up and you're going to want a couple drills uh, this one's going to be drilling our pilot holes our holes through the boat and then obviously one to drive them in and that's what we're using there y'all that's a little number 10 24 by one and we're using stainless steel little stainless steel lock nuts on these guys that is going to be the ticket it's going to stay put a lot better then uh, if you were just to use self tappers, which is not uncommon in a lot of boats, but we've had really good luck with the uh, nylon lock nuts and they don't tend to back out. We're also gonna show you guys something. This does not come pre-drilled. As you'll notice, there are no holes in there. So we actually, my brother Mark made a little jig, a little template so that we can lay out. So y'all, we're gonna go ahead and start proceeding with this thing, getting it started. We'll show you as we proceed. Should be pretty interesting, y'all hang tight. Bruce, I wanted to show you guys, we have actually made it around one side, around the bow, and we're in the process of trying to wrap things up, but I want to show you this jig that we made for drilling the holes. And we got some measurements on here. What we found works really good is a four inch center to center on the screw holes. And these are seven eighths of an inch down from the, the top edge down to the bottom. And you're going to need to put a little radius or contour that back edge. And what we're doing is we are using one screw kind of to help us center. So you can see we've already drilled a series of holes. Those are those four inch centers. And we're just taking that screw and finding one of those holes. That makes sure everything lines up. We're squeezing this down nice and tight. We're just punching through. And that is a 3 16 drill bit. It works really good for a number 10 screw is what we're using. All right, so that's those holes. We're going to pop that out, move it down. That kind of centers in the next hole. That's good enough for now using that saw horse as a support is working out great for us we're also using these little Irwin speed clamps these things are fantastic if you've never used any of them they slide back and forth and you can kind of do them one-handed really great for this kind of application and what we're doing mark is pulling some tension logan show mark over there he's pulling pulling taut on this you want to pull a little bit of tension into it make sure it's up nice and snug and then we're gonna grab this with one and then two all right there we go so it's got some tension on it we want to make sure it's nice and snug and we're picking right back up we can see our last screw was right there there's our next screw hole. And we are just working our way. Just want to be sure it's up nice and tight. One more time. We're 
we're finding y'all that about five, one, two, three, four, five is about as many as we do at a time. We'll blow that. Blow all that fiberglass out. And then we are using a little bit of soapy water. So we put a little bit of Dawn in a sprayer and we're gonna wet that a little bit. And the reason we're doing it is because the heads of these screws, it's a tight fit. And sometimes it'll kind of mar up that surface a little bit. So if you put just a tiny bit of soapy water, it helps them to go in the hole a little easier. All right, Mark, you want to, we'll get a couple started. And what we've been doing to speed things along, if you've got someone that can help, I'm getting the screws started. And Mark is kind of coming in here on the back side and going ahead and start the lock nuts there, Mark. He's just getting them started. He's not worrying about trying to tighten them or up or anything. Now, one thing that we have found with this particular model rub rail, this is not the real hard or rigid version. This is kind of the, the ones that come in a, a kit that is coiled up. It's the flexible and it's a little soft. If you're not careful, you can over tighten these fasteners and it tends to want to sink the screw head right down into the material too deep all right i'm gonna change positions with mark and find the next one and we're just using a little that's a 3 8 wrench and no power tools i would not recommend a drill or a power tool tightening these things you kind of need a little bit of finesse a little bit of feel and you can see y'all i'm just using finger tight this i'm gonna go on to the next one there we are you don't want to over tighten them though it will pull those screw heads through there I like doing fiberglass work. It is not rocket science, but there is definitely a, a system that seems to work. And I'm not tightening these any more than kind of like what my fingers, no wrenching down on it. It'll pull that screw right through. All right, y'all, that is kind of the process. I apologize, it's getting to be summertime down here. It's getting hot. Logan will show you, we got about half the boat to go at this point. We're gonna wrap on around. And then I'm going to show you guys when we get a little further along how we install the insert. There you go. Video on. All right, there you go, y'all. So we finished the track and we are doing a little insert right now. So there's a little small diameter. Oh gosh, that's probably a half inch diameter or so. And you've uh, got to kind of squeeze that down into the track. There are several different ways to do it, but you kind of just have to squeeze. There may be a tool of some kind out there, but if you squeeze ahead of it and then just give it a push, so I'm kind of doing a squeeze, squeeze and a push, a squeeze and a push, just like that. And it seems like you'll hit a good spot and then a tough spot. I don't know if it's the fasteners or what. They're making it more difficult. Sometimes you'll hit a bad spot. And it seems like y'all, you can go about a foot and your thumbs will start to hurt. And if you got somebody else, Mark's been alternating. My Mark, turn. Mark, why don't you jump in there? I'm gonna try. He's, he's got a slightly different technique. Sometimes he kind of well, wiggles it back. Spot. He hit a hard spot. I left him on a hard spot. There you go. But you kind of just got to wiggle it back and forth and push, push it at in at the same time. Seeing it go fast sometimes and then it just yeah for a minute. it kind of appears to be where the fasteners 
where the fasteners are. It is not easy on your thumbs. Thumbs, for sure. That's a idea there for somebody. We've kind of experimented a little bit. If you had some kind of a roller or something to squeeze that down, we even tried spraying a little bit of the soapy water on there. It doesn't really seem to help too, too much. It's kind of one of those things where we just alternate and you go a few inches and we've made it around that side in about 15 or 20 minutes. It goes okay, but you need a partner to do that. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna jump back at it. Check that out, y'all. Beautiful stainless steel cleats from Jim Luck. So we have pretty much wrapped up the gel coat. We're working on the rub rail. We're down to the very end caps, but we've moved forward to hardware and we're just working our way around the boat and we have actually made it to the very back and we are installing these slim, I believe they call that a slim, that's a six inch from Jim Lux. That is gonna be the style we're using. And to install these things, my brother Marky Mark has made a really cool little jig out of plywood. Basically this thing is four and three sixteenths inches center to center on the outer bolts. And then between here, is that four and a quarter, Mark? I believe four, that's, that's four and three that, sixteenths and two and a quarter. And two and a quarter. Four and three sixteenths and two and a quarter. And we have marked out where we want those to go. We marked a center line here. It's kind of between this brace and this rear bulkhead. And y'all, we are gonna video the process here. Gonna show you guys how this goes. First off, you're just gonna lay this little template Got a center line mark there. He's got a center line on the boat itself. Mark, you want to hold that real steady? Mm-hmm. Is it good? All right, I'm going to jump. Is it lined up good? Looks pretty good. Looks Measure good. twice, drill once. You can see it better than me. Hold it nice and steady. All right, I'm going to go ahead and punch that hole all the way through. Vacuum. Yeah, I just close, wipe it off of there. Normally, y'all, we would be vacuuming, but it's so loud. All right, gonna take a 3 8 bolt, which is the same as the bolt here on the cleat. He's gonna realign it, and that's gonna keep it from jumping around. All right, you can move it at this point. Okay. Put okay. it back on. Now, put those back in. That's going to hold it centered up. And Mark, if you don't mind, if you'll I'll hold this. Now I'm going to chuck, I'm going to take the 3 8 three eighths bit out and put a quarter inch bit, which is the same as the pilot hole in the hole saw. And we're going to start just a tiny bit, a tiny bit. And now we can move our jig out of the way and that is going to make it perfect for our hole saw wallowing that out a little bit to give it a little more room are now y'all got to be careful it gets really hot you'd be shocked at how hot that can get so we're using some pliers and then it's been a little tricky to get the core out of there so we found that a rasp works really good push it down there in the end and then just hold on to that Yo. It's, it's it's warm, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say a bad and, word. And then you could you just knock the core off of there. Yo, I'm not kidding. That is smoking hot. Yeah, that even is this piece is hot. Yeah, even this core. That's a piece of the uh, kusa and the wood. But it's amazing how hot. I'm gonna throw that in the garbage can. And I'm gonna It'll give you a blister. It will give you a blister. All right. I'm just gonna Ooh. put that back on. You just gotta handle. I grab it. the hot side. It was. Warm, wasn't it, brother? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go again. Give me long to fill of it. 
find that little bit of pilot hole that we started with. And away we go. the vacuum this time oh where is it mark here i'll hold this you want this i'll get it yeah now normally what we've been doing y'all is while we're drilling is we're using the shop vac to pick up a bunch of this dust but it's so darn loud i wanted the plug-ins over here brother yeah that's okay but what we can do y'all is kind of just show you so we've got one here that we've been using all morning and that jig kind of results in this thing just dropping right down right down into place if you don't have a jig or something like that made it can make it really really tricky to get these lined up but gem lux that's g-e-m-l-u-x they make really nice hardware and we're using a good bit of it here and that is their slim six inch cleat and the installation is quite easy but that little jig might help you guys out if you like that little jig or have some comments on how we did that, be sure to drop a comment there, y'all. We're getting ready to install those six inch Gem Lux cleats. Now I've already removed the nuts and washers that go on there and there's also a little trim piece that goes on the bottom. That's kind of self-explanatory. We've got our holes here that we've drilled previously. Usually like to test fit everything. It's okay if it's a nice snug fit. If it's too tight, that uh, 3 8 diameter like a, a rasp is gonna be really good for reaching in there and cleaning up those drill holes a little bit and we're just using some good 100 percent that's ge uh not necessary to use anything super crazy high dollar i went this morning and talk about things going up in price i went this morning to buy a tube of 3m marine silicone and it was 47 dollars for a tube of that and i said no i'm gonna go to lowe's and get the 100 percent 10 year guarantee it's totally fine this is not below the water line this is not anything super crucial this is just to keep things from vibrating what i'm doing is running a little bead on one side of all the fasteners and mark has been helping me but he's cameraman now we're down we're down a cameraman today so we're doing multi-roll and just a little bead around the base nothing crazy it's about all you need down. down she goes lock nuts they do provide you with a really nice heavy duty washer and let's see if I can multitask this thing you got to be pretty flexible when you're building boats gotta be pretty good with uh reaching into odd places much easier on the other the others we had full access and easy really easy access i guess we're pretty fortunate compared to some boats don't have any access under the gunnels all right all right y'all so the nuts are on and we've been using if you've never used one of these before it's made by a company called gear ratchet do you see how that socket is hollow this has got a adjustable adjustable head on there i don't know if mark you can zoom in there that's called a gear ratchet that thing is the ticket if you're working on boats if you got long studs or fasteners it can go all the way through y'all i'm going to tighten that up from the underside we're going to work our way around got this cleat we got one more and we are all done we've got big chain faults big heavy duty straps today is lift day we all saw us we got the rubber rail on we've been doing gel coat been doing hardware all day yesterday but we decided today is the day to go ahead and pick the boat up we got a nice big spreader bar that was one that mark mark had we've got it chained and we got the big heavy duty nylon straps Got an overhead winch that when we picked the boat up originally, and then we got some big uh, chain faults over there, ready to go. Y'all, I won't lie, I'm a little bit stressed out today, uh, picking, picking up eight years of work, 
three or four feet off the ground and then back in this trailer underneath it's got me a little little bit stressed um here's our trailer i don't know if y'all have seen this came from magic tilt that is a big tandem axle aluminum wheels i am pretty happy with that we've adjusted the bunks a little bit in here to make it work but that's a 8600 pound capacity uh, it's got disc brakes it's torsion axles which are really nice you see no springs we got torsion axles down here in salt water that is definitely a help and uh, got it hooked up to the old the old tundra that's my that's my work truck and if y'all noticed a theme here this cement gray and then the color of the new boat it's not a coincidence we got a matching rig there so thought i'd show a little bit we have been prepping all morning so it's it's been two or three hours of getting the straps and the chain and we've had to move some pulleys around and all that stuff we're going to be starting the process here in a minute get ready to set it on the trailer we'll make some trailer adjustments and we'll show you how she looks as we move forward The boat is tilted that way. Yeah. All right. She's hovering. She's hovering. <laughs> She's hovering. She's hovering, y'all. Oh my goodness. All right, that's good, Mark. I think. We're just gonna let it sit here for just a second and be sure before we go to picking this thing way up. Be sure that everything. I need to bring the stern up a little bit. It's got quite a bow up attitude. I don't want to get too crazy carried away. What do you think? Mark? I'm happy. See anything? I'm happy, happy. Alright. It's good, you know, because... We can probably get it high enough on this back. Just don't get in the danger zone, Mark. Right Probably high enough to get under the, tra the trailer under it, huh? Yeah, right. The boat is tilted. Okay. go look at there everybody beautiful trailer we've been making some adjustments underneath it so it's actually been a couple days we had to add some uh extend the the bunks out front here the way i launch and load this boat we need a little more support we adjusted the main beams underneath there we got the bow eye installed 
got the trolling motor mount we got this really nice gem lux cleats and the whole interior of the boat right now pretty much emptied out even got the uh really nice the scupper scupper drains the deck drains screwed in place Uh, kind of cool to see out in the wide open been in the shop her whole life I'm pretty happy with that there she is y'all pulled her out in the sunshine let her kind of just rest out here a little bit that's pretty exciting stuff but we're uh probably about ready to close this video out but i want to show y'all what we took delivery of yesterday they're back here in the shop been a very big deal getting them all through the last couple of years been super super hard to get hardware and equipment and specialty parts and motors have actually been really hard to get but look at what we have sitting on the back yep those are yamaha f-150s we got a right hand and a left hand rotation we're getting ready to lift them off with our chain fault there and uh we are pretty excited about that y'all i am won't lie though we're all exhausted we have been going super hard mark's been down here working with me every day till well after dark six days a week sometimes seven days a week but uh motors are coming on next but i want to let y'all know how much i appreciate you guys watching the channel staying tuned in i know it's been a lengthy process but we are getting close to putting motors on that's going to be the next episode so y'all if you haven't already subscribed to like share comment tell a friend we're really working hard to grow the channel it's because of y'all support that it's happening the way it is and uh, it's captain joe here with island marine charters and fish bump tv here on youtube and we will catch you guys next time out